guys, welcome back. Um, clearly our hair has changed for the millionth time. I fried mine off and then chopped it. I get into that later in the, the tutorial portion because I just can't shut up. Um, but today we are going to be doing a kind of whole, kind of whole brand review of Kaleidos Makeup. Um, they sent us a really, really nice PR package. Nice PR package. Uh, so we're going to get into what we received and our thoughts on every uh, single product. So if you are interested to see what we got and how we feel about everything, then just keep on watching. Keep it on. <laughs> So we got some eyeshadow palettes, just a few, just like, you know, 10. <laughs> um, so they have their new collection, which is the, what they reached out to us for and then said, you know, they can we can choose other things of our choice. Um, we've got the Kaleidos Futurism something, Shishimi, oh, Shishimi City. Sashimi City. Did I not say that? You said Shishimi. Oh, Sashimi City, which looks like this. It's very lovely, beautiful, sparkly, neutral, but fun. And then the Lunar Lavender. So the, the whole purpose, at least as far as the marketing went for this collection, was to be the, like a fun take on your, your general kind of neutral tones. Um, I think they did really well with that. Specifically, I feel they really excelled at that in the Sashimi City palette. Mm -hmm. My one gripe would be the two... Uh, deep brown mattes in there are pretty similar. They're really similar. I think it would have been like such a great addition to have like a really rich burgundy like um ooh. like for example um punk in the Born to Run palette this deep burgundy shade here. I think that would have been the perfect addition to that palette. Otherwise though it's beautiful. Uh, Kaleidos really excels with their shimmer formula as we've found out. <laughs> Anyway, so we'll swatch this stuff and um, I'll either insert it while we're talking about it or whatever, um, but I think that the shimmers are going to, you know, show up a little bit better in swatches rather than like us swatching right here. You're not um, going to be able to tell. You're going to need to see something a little more close up. You, mm -hmm. you can also check their Instagram page. That's a really good reference. <laughs> but I'm going to swatch them anyway because I'm awesome and so you don't have to do more work. So cool. I really, really like this one. Yeah, Sashimi City is probably my favorite out of the, the two here. Um, so this is Lunar Lavender. Ugh, we already opened it for you, but I'll do it again. Um, so I think you have a good range of tones in here. Um, I actually really like, I, when I did my look for this, uh, with this palette, I, I mixed the, the browns and the purples um, to kind of get a purpley brown. And it worked out just, just fine. The shimmers in here are really, really, really freaking pretty. Um, this purple here is way softer than the other shimmers from their, mm -hmm. from their line, um, which I guess is worth noting. Uh, they all work best, I would say, with a glitter primer and a uh, finger, but they do pick up well on a brush. So that's really, really nice. Not mm -hmm. every shimmer shade does pick up like that. Um, and these do, so that's fantastic. Uh, overall, uh, Kaleidos mattes are... Subpar. Decent. <laughs> I like them. I can work with them. They're just not the best formula. They're comparable to, I don't know, ColourPop mattes. The shimmers, however, are like Star out of this world. Like closer, the, the closest to Cleona that I've found in, mm -hmm. a, in a shimmer, aside from Pat McGrath. These are just top notch. We also have Electric, no, Electro Turquoise, which is probably my favorite of the palettes. Um, it's so stunning. It's so pretty. It's so up my alley. You guys know how I feel about Teals. Teals. <laughs> Debbie Ryan. I love teals. Um, I really like the choice of the brown that they put in here. It's very cool toned and I think that makes it a little bit more versatile in terms of this palette because it makes it easier to deepen something up, in my opinion, when something's cool toned. Warm tones can throw off a look entirely. Um, and if you need it to be warmer toned, you can just mix it with the orange. <laughs> Exactly. That, I think, at first I was a little confused as to what the purpose of the orange in the palette was. I was like, orange and blue can blend together, but like, it's kind of difficult for me. <laughs> anyway, like a mac and cheese orange like that, it just seemed a little weird. But I was thinking like, you could blend out the brown with the orange. You can use the orange as your wash of color on the lid. Like, there's, it's a multi-purpose kind of shade. It was just, it threw me off at first. But I love, I love how they look mm -hmm. next to each other putting them on my eyes would be the struggle for that. So I don't know if you're weird with blending, maybe that's something to take note of or color theory, because I don't know anything about anything. Um, this is the uh, Astro Pink palette. I had been lusting after this for freaking ages. So the fact that we got this sent to us is just nuts to me. Um, I really, I really, 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 really love this. I think everything in here is top quality. Um, I feel like the mattes in here are 
less powdery than the other ones mm -hmm. in some of I other actually products. haven't used that one. I thought about using it today, but then I decided to use I have Shady City. I haven't used Electro Turquoise, so that's next on my list. Um, so these, although we haven't played with them in depth of time, like some of them we've only done one look with, some of them two or three, um, we still have a feel for We them. have a feel for them. I know pretty much straight off the bat if I'm going to like a shadow palette or not, and if we have any qualms, we will mention them in the video. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in here, it's it's really, really, really freaking stunning. Um, this blue here is like a shifty purple kind of shade, um, and it is a little harder pressed than some of their other shimmers, but it still picks up really well on a brush or on a finger. Um, this shade, though, I don't have the, the name sheet with me anymore. I toss that. I don't really... I'm not going to keep that around. This shade is so pretty. Um, I used this uh, in the look that I created for the video. <laughs> so, so you'll see this in action. Um, I really love this. The, the, the black in here is really, really sparkly, um, which some people may hate. I personally don't mind it. The only thing I don't like it for is lower lash line work because you can get a lot more fallout. Um, and when I have my base on fallout, it's not something I'm messing with. So Especially with no powder. <laughs> something to note there. And oh, also the black does not always stick on top of an already um, blended out kind of eyeshadow look. Um, so you might want to do a reverse blending technique or use that kind of second after your initial shade. Don't build too much before you apply it. Um, then the last shadow palette, which I was super excited about, is the Escape Pod palette. So here's what she looks like. Um, this is pretty much mentioned in all of the reviews, but this blue is a major fail. It's a very big dud, in my opinion. Um, I've tried it with, uh, just, I've tried it one, no, twice, um, and it's just really, really hard to work with. It's doable, like, like if you're not putting anything else on, it's doable. I use that loosely. It's it's a very bad matte. It's just what it is. It's very bad. It's very uh, it's not it's not good. <laughs> it's not patchy. It reminds me of the James Charles palette. <laughs> but yeah, it is pressed pigment esque. Um, I don't know how it would work to blend things out. It with. doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. No. So I I haven't used that blue because I watched her struggle with it. It just grips on in weird places. Mm -hmm. it Even oxidizes. when you pat it on, it oxidizes. It's not. I love the color. But it's not a good formula, so <laughs> stay clear of the blue. The rest of the palette, however, is lovely. I do find that these two like bright oranges, like the corals and the orange, um, those are um, fairly similar. Well, they're <laughs> fairly similar, but I just mean that they're, um, again, those really, really powdery shadow formulas, so sometimes it's hard to build on top of them, so you have to be careful with it. But I think that they're different enough, but there could have been something else there instead. Um, the shimmers are really, really nice in this palette. Pretty much standard Kaleidos. I'd say they're maybe a touch harder pressed than the other ones, but this um, Starlight, the lightest shade. Light. <laughs> oh, she is beautiful. Chef's kiss. Stunning. Love everything about this. This is such a fun palette. Um, the packaging sucks. Oh, of course it's going to stand up now. It does this. My hand's not straight. But you, <sighs> can't, you can't keep it open. <laughs> so that's a pain just because when you're doing your eyeshadow you gotta hold it like you're reading yeah it's funny because even though I really like this palette and the looks that I've created with it it's actually my least favorite out of what we received like as far as like what I'm inspired by um, somehow not having that curated color story in front of me just throws me off I don't know why but I want I was gonna buy like if I were to purchase from Kaleidos, I would have gone with the Escape Pod palette because you get so much more variety in it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm glad I got to try the other palettes from them because I really like how compact they are. I feel like the price is great on these two. Mm -hmm. Like, I love all of the this packaging. This isn't, you know, packaging they bought off of AliExpress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not wholesale seam. Seam. It's not wholesale looking is what I was saying. Uh, with the new neutrals collection, they did uh, send us all three of the Charisma Contour palettes. We kept one. This is the medium shade. Mm -hmm. warm and medium um so you get a, a highlight a bronzer and a contour or a, or two contours I don't know exactly what the purpose is. I'm pretty sure it's a bronzer and a contour in my opinion um fair skin can use this contour shade as a contour right here I can't if I use strictly this shade as a contour it will be muddy as hell on me so I mix the two yeah I mix the two so that way I get a more like standard medium contour color. Um, the formula is really nice. The bronzer um, I used as a bronzer and it threw me off because I haven't used a matte bronzer in yeah, six to ten years. Yeah. 
so it's something I'll have to get used to um, but I'm getting a bronzer anyway so I won't be using this as a bronzer but I have been using it to contour just play around with it the formula is good um, the brightening shade I think is perfect for medium skin tones I use it to clean up contour because <laughs> you know, I have I did eyes. just for the sake of the video I put it on today uh, just in my like t-zone and under my contour um, it is a little deeper than I would go for like a highlighting kind of effect but it's not too dark for my skin tone by any stretch um, and it actually looks really nice on the skin so if mm -hmm. you use a light hand it's gonna look pretty effortless as far as powders go it's a good it's pretty good formula. it's a weird pan size mm -hmm. um, I see what they were going for but I feel like it could have been opposite almost I think that the highlight shade should be bigger I feel like that's what more that's what most general consumers use more of maybe that's just me but they're using this as a highlight powder not as a setting powder so mm -hmm. that's also different but um i do like this the the one qualm i have about it is i feel the shade range is kind of funky that's dying it's dying already <laughs> um i find that these shades are kind of weird so the light the lightest the fair contour whatever it's called um i find is very similar to the medium there's not a huge difference and then it jumps to the deep although I'm happy that they have three because it's really nice to see any brand think of more than just their light to medium and the deep customers. is pretty deep so the deep nice. is pretty deep um, we're gonna send it to a friend of ours that has deeper skin so we'll kind of see what he thinks about it um, but I do think that they could have put they probably could have done five or at least made the fairest contour fairer to make it a, a difference like an actual bigger variety if that makes sense i would hope they would expand that in the future they tend to be really good at least for my what i've seen at taking customer uh criticisms mm -hmm. on their products they like that blush a lot yeah they discontinued the blushes they created and they're redoing those as far as i'm concerned they're going to redo those and offer a bigger range because mm -hmm. the ones they came out with were so fair and people were like hey black <laughs> people exist yeah. they're like oh yeah so <laughs> they they seem to actually do a good job of listening to consumers which i can appreciate um then we got this uh, lip gloss here. Wow, this is gorgeous. It's beautiful. Um, not the tone that I typically go for, but nonetheless beautiful. It's, it's pretty sheer. Yeah. It's sheer. Put yeah. it on. I'm wearing a little bit of lipstick, but not much at this point. It's not as intense as it looks in the tube. It's just a really no. pretty, really See, intense level. Better. It's like amped up Fenty gloss bomb. Yeah. Like the original, but like a little... It has a little more zhuzh to it. I don't find that it's gritty at all. No, um, there's you no can... grit to it. And I'm sensitive to glitter and lip gloss, let me tell you. Yeah, it just, it's a really pretty forgiving tone. I've, I have it layered in a bunch of other things. For me, this would be just like a throw on gloss because mm -hmm. glittery glosses, I don't like to use over lipstick for whatever reason. That's because I don't want to ruin them with the color of my lipstick. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to ruin them with so I don't do that. But um, overall, it's a really nice formula. It's a really pretty color. It's pretty much universally flattering, so mm -hmm. that's good. Mm -hmm. And we got three highlighters. Um, so when they uh, emailed us to send us PR, they asked what we wanted, and we basically said, every oh, single eyeshadow that you've ever created. And then, uh, w well, we just gave them a handful of things. We're like, listen, we, they offered to send us like so much stuff. Six things we each. We were like, we don't need listen. that. <laughs> I don't think we need that much. So they threw in the highlighters without our request, but I'm glad they chose the ones they did, because if they would have sent me a blue, I wouldn't have used it. Um, so we got Star Surfer, Ray Rider, and Mars Melter. Unclear if this is the reformulated version. I know they just reformulated mm -hmm. this, so I don't know. This is a Mars Melter. I can't tell you. I'm wearing it uh, in the center of my face, but you can't tell on camera. Um, I mentioned that when I'm filming it. We'll obviously insert swatches to see if we the can shift catch the shift. is very intense on this. It says red. I see more hot pink, personally. Um, these are... I'm actually blown away by these. I did not expect to like them, hence why I did not request them, uh, because I don't tend to gravitate towards colorful highlighters. I do like pink highlighters, but normally it's not like a really intense pink shift. Not like an ABH, what was it? Moonchild. Moonchild palette. Mm -hmm. I, I panned out Pink Heart from that, that palette, and though I liked that highlighter, it was very uh, glittery, and even though I like a glittery cheek, there's just a certain way it has to be done. Fenty, Fenty does it best. Um, I don't know how else to explain that. These are really, 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 really pretty. They're, pretty. They, they're really smooth on the skin, but they somehow do have that glimmer to them as mm -hmm. well. Um, so it's not a completely smooth, like you're gonna see 
texture texture powder powder. Powder. Mm. where you're going to see like glitter flakes in there or whatever it's nothing like really intense it's not as crazy as Fenty Diamond Bomb but it does have that um so Mars Belter is the red shift and I used in my uh, look I use Star Surfer that's what I have on now I just think this is so beautiful it just has the most soft pink shift mm -hmm. um so it just it's very forgiving and it's not um there's no white cast which I think is really great so I could see these being universally flattering um obviously I, I have not I don't I'm not black I don't know if these are going to work on deep work skin on tones. deep skin tones but based on their Instagram page it looks like they do work really nicely with a, a variety of complexions um, and then we got Ray Rider. This is just a, a neutral one. This is the reformulated version, I believe. Um, I, this is my favorite. Obviously. This one is you really, know. really pretty. Um, so it's just a normal uh, highlight. It's, mm -hmm. it's perfect for me because it's not too light and it's not too dark. It's that perfect, like, your skin tone kind of highlight. Um, my favorite way to apply these is with uh, AOA Studio Highlight Brush. Um, this is uh, the F25. You have to get this in the set. This is the best highlight brush ever. I cannot believe this came in a one dollar like makeup haul. Makeup haul. Um, yeah, so I've been loving this. Um, but that's my favorite way to use this, and just like circular motions. Um, I don't find that this one even is too intense to the point where I can't put it over top of blush because sometimes that's an issue. Uh, Personally, for me, it is, but I don't highlight on top of blush. I will never highlight on top of blush. It always looks bad, in my opinion. I always forget. So, um, so I don't find that this does. Sometimes, if you put a highlight over, like, when your entire base is done, when the highlight is your last step, it can look a little funky, and it like it just takes a white away. stripe. Yeah, like like a stripe, or um, you're missing a patch of your blush. It's weird. I don't find that this does this, but I also don't layer it up to be really, 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 really intense. So it might do that if you like something really really blinding but i generally i like something blinding but i don't tend to layer it a ton so uh yeah i really like these and the packaging is just so cute the like the little tin adorable. the tin and it's like it looks like a pillow like like a pillow mint. this reminds me of space jam yeah i want to eat it i don't know <laughs> that's so cute so. yeah the highlights were are fun not something i personally will get a ton of use out of i don't think um depending i mean i i'm still panning out powder highlights but then we get more powder highlights and then we get more powder highlights and I don't want any more. I want the Salt New York highlights. That's it. That's all I want. That's what I want very badly. And the e.l.f. one. But <laughs> um, so I probably won't get a ton of use out of those. But I do like an intense highlight like on my nose and my chin and stuff. So I don't mind using powder highlights for that. But on my cheeks, I don't really put powder highlight on there very often any anymore just because I don't I don't love the way it looks. Um, this one is, however, a really good tone for me as well. Um, it's a little icy on me. It definitely is, but it is that perfect. It's not gold and it's not pink. It's like a perfect mix of that. I don't even know if I'd call it champagne necessarily. Because champagne means pink. Yeah, it's a very um, neutral, universal, yeah. neutral kind of color, which I really like because um, pink highlights aren't something I like on my skin tone. I love a gold highlight, a gold highlight, a gold highlight. I always love a gold highlight. I always have. Um, I'm panning attempting to pan one that is pink straight pink and i hate every moment of it it's terrible um but this one is not pink so i do like it so yeah that's kind of our overall thoughts overview. on everything shimmers are awesome mattes are pretty decent some of them suck um highlights are really pretty lip gloss is good contour palette's pretty decent um so we will get into the tutorial portion of the video so we'll just do two eye looks for you using a variety of whatever we have here yeah <laughs> and uh yeah if you have any requests for what you want to see more of in the future, mm -hmm. uh, look we'll definitely sort of, yeah. make I that mean, happen. I think like a two looks one palette on each of the small palettes would be really smart because it can kind of show you the variety you can create with how little shades there are in here. Not that there's like no shades, but you know, it's a very straightforward kind of approach to makeup, yeah. which I love. Um, so we could do like two looks one palette with all of those or whatever. So just let us know your thoughts. We'll get into the tutorial and we'll see you in the outro. Okay, so for this look, I wanted to showcase as many of uh, the shadows as possible. Uh, I don't know if I did the best job of that, um, but I used two palettes. So I used the uh, the Escape Pod palette right here, 
and then ow i just pinched my finger and then i also used the astro pink palette for this look so i will show you how i got it i started off with this uh pink shade right here and i haven't primed my eyes let me fix that okay anyway i'm gonna go into this shade here um it's more of just a base color honestly um, i'm gonna cool it down a lot so this like warm burgundy color isn't gonna be ideal for me um but it is a good base color for what i need because i didn't have like the blue in the um escape pod palette was what i wanted to use but that formula sucks honestly the blue is not good so <laughs> i'm not using that but i am going to start here um and obviously this is very winged so i'm gonna wing it out but mostly i'm gonna focus on building up pigment here first okay it's not perfect but this is roughly the shape i want to start with um so then i'm going into the escape pod palette and i am taking the shade soray up here this like lavender color and i'm going to blend out the edges of that where i have so many brushes in front of me it's not even funny um so this is really going to cool down the look a lot um and it's going to help uh, because I'm gonna add a black too, like this pink is not really gonna be showing anymore. So first I'm just gonna kind of pack it above, like so. And then I'll go and blend it out. This brush is from uh, Shot Miss A also. I love this shade, it matches my hair. What do you think of the cut? <laughs> I um, So today I, um, the, the color underneath is a, a different color than the top because I got a different dye for it. Um, because I had some like hot pink here that I needed to cover and it wasn't covered with the lavender that I bought. So I was like, you know what, I'll just do the under part a little deeper um, to help rectify that. And I accidentally bought a um, permanent dye, which means you have to add developer, which means my hair that I just bleached yesterday was freaking fried after I washed it out. Like it was so stringy and gross. So I looked in the bathroom mirror. I said, mm, screw it. <laughs> so that's that's where this cut came from. If you were curious as to why I cut my hair. Now that I have that uh, blended out, as you can see, it's a lot cooler in tone than this pink. Um, I'm going to go into the black in the uh, Astro Pink palette right here. It is a glittery black, so it's a matte with like tons and tons of glitter in it. It's similar to the one if you got the Dose of Colors and I Love Sarai, uh shadow palette, whatever that was called. Um, it's similar to that black where it's it's not quite just a matte with glitter in it because it has so much glitter, but it's not a metallic either. It's definitely a matte formula. Yeah, this is a pretty good black. I like it so far. Um, I will say it doesn't build super well, so I wouldn't, um, I would not lay down a ton of base pigment with your matte shadows and then go in with this one. It just ends up being a little bit patchy that way. Um, so they don't layer the best. So the reverse blending technique is probably better with this, but um, I wasn't thinking of that when I did this look, so it didn't happen. <laughs> I'm not doing much to blend as of yet, I'm just packing it on. Uh, and this is a BH Cosmetics brush, I don't know, it's from the Marvel Collection. A little tiny brush. Go back in with that first brush that we had the like, magenta kind of color on. Um, and I'm going to use that to blend the edges of this. Um, mainly because I think with, uh, with such a contrast in colors like that super dark black and then the light lavender kind of shade it's kind of hard to blend the edges of those sometimes um so i like to have a shade that's kind of in the middle uh, my transition shade is normally one of the deepening shades just not the only deepening shade you know so that's how i like to blend things is with a with a shade that's not too much lighter and not too much darker and i'm just taking the brush with the lavender and uh buffing over those edges just once more to make sure we don't lose that color and then for my lid shade, I'm going to go in with this one right here from the Astro Pink palette. I'm going to kind of wing it a little bit like out at the top like I did over here. It was an accident, but I had to shape my whole eye look around it after that. So um, these are definitely impactful. Okay, like there is there is nothing subtle about Kaleido Shimmers, which is just uh, my favorite thing on the planet. So I am really really thrilled with the shimmers in these palettes not all of the mattes are great but the shimmers are just absolutely divine um so i'm layering most of that here and then i did that little wing as you can see um and i'm gonna just pat a little bit over the edge of the black but it's not a big deal because i will be going in with other shades after that um, this look is a lot more structured than I normally go, so I hope you're happy. <laughs> and then I'm going to go in with Cosmic Cabaret, this shimmering purple here, um, on this uh, BH Cosmetics 
it's my Ray Ray number eight brush. Uh, I'm gonna do this purple and then I am going to do uh, the blue from the Astro Pink palette as well, uh, just in here. So, oh, I wanna go in with the blue first actually. So I'm gonna take the blue on this brush and this blue is just, oh, she is beautiful by the way. Um, and I'm gonna put her closest to the black. And this blue has a black base, so it's going to blend a lot easier with that black than the um, like that silvery color that we just put down. It's not a silver, but it's like it's it has silverish qualities to it, you know. I'm gonna go in with that uh, cosmic cabaret shade on the other side of the brush, and put it right here. This one's not going to have as much impact as the blue. I just kind of wanted another color to layer on top and fade and add some dimension, basically. And then for my inner corner, I'm going in with Space Oasis right in the center here. Um, this shade is just magical, as is every other shade, shimmer shade from these Kaleidos palettes. Um, they're just beautiful. I'll see if later I can like do a close up so you can really see like the dimension on these. They just have so much texture to them and you guys know that's what I go for. So I'm gonna buff that around the inner corner and bring it just a little bit up here. And then after that, I just need to do like these wing portions. Am I still on autofocus? Oh geez, I hope not. Oh, I'm so on autofocus. Oh, no. Hopefully I'm in focus. I have no idea. Um, anyway, this is the completed look. I did use the uh, Charisma Contour palette that they sent over to us as well as the uh, highlight in uh, Star Surfer. I, I actually really, really love the highlights they sent over. That's the completed look. I just used some black on the lower lash line. and I, I opted for a matte black from ABH just because I didn't want that glitter to fall over my face from that. Uh, from that Astro Pink palette, so I went for that instead. Um, and then I just buffed it out with a little bit of that lavender shade, so yeah. This is the completed look. Okay, so this is the only palette I personally have not played with yet. Um, this is the Kaleidos, what, Sashimi City palette? Looks like this. I'm first gonna go in with the, uh, deepest matte brown, right there. I'm just going to take this on a, like, tapered fluffy brush. It's from Morphe. Let me do that first. I'm gonna do like a rounded shape. I've never done like an eye shape like this, but I kind of thought it might be fun. So I decided to. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep this high up if I can. If it gets on my lid, no biggie. I'm not worried. But I love this brown color. It's so pretty. It's like such a pretty warm brown. Normally I lose my mind over cool toned browns, but you know what? This one's very nice as well, and it's warm toned, so. I'm kind of tapping when I get down here, because I'm not very good at blending out a rounded shape. I end up uh, getting it everywhere, and that's just not my intention. So now, very lightly, my hand's very far back on the brush, I'm starting to kind of buff it out a little bit. Buff and blend, boys, buff and blend. Now I'm taking this whacked out, so terrible blending brush that is like so broken and taking the yellowy shade right there the matte one obviously and blending out the top with it i've done this wrong already i'm gonna go into the escape pod palette and take the cream shade in here see still sticking with kaleidos and uh wipe out my work not wipe it out but lighten the top if I can. It's like baking. <laughs> well, we're gonna cut the crease. No, we're not. I'm gonna take this pencil brush with the deepest brown as well. And just go a little bit higher with it. Higher than my crease, my natural crease. I'm gonna take a little bit of concealer, not something I do very often, but I am doing it today for shits. I'm gonna cut my crease with this um, in that kind of circular shape. There's shimmer shadow from the last eye on this brush, so we're going to ignore that. And I normally never do this because concealer creases, but it's like nine at night and I'm sick, so I'm gonna take this off right after anyway. And then I'm gonna take the lightest shimmer shade in here and put that all over my eyelid because I think this color is stunning. This is like, Natasha in a gold palette level stunning. It's lovely. 
I'm taking it on this brush and then I will go in with my finger. Um, these shades are like very chunky, shimmery, metallic, which is my favorite thing ever, but it's not to some people. So just keep that in mind. I think it is what creates a majestic shimmer shadow, but people find them to be annoying. I don't. I'm take that pencil brush again and just lightly go over where I went out of my lines. I think those are even enough. It's not perfect. Yeah, one's more oval and one's more circle. It's cool though. So I'm not gonna do anything on the lower lash line because I'm boring in every way. But I'm gonna take a pencil brush and the darkest shimmer, that pink one, and I'm gonna use it kind of in my inner corner area um, because it sounds fun. And I like, I like a challenge, you know? So yeah. We're gonna add it in the inner corner. Perfect. I'm gonna go do my base and I'll be back. Um, and you can see what it looks like with the base done. I'm hopefully I'll look less scary. Again, I'm kind of sick and I just dyed my hair dark, so now I kind of look like a gremlin. <laughs> okay, here's what she looks like. I did use the Mars Melter highlighter in the center of my face. Um, because I don't like highlight on my cheekbones very much, especially not like colorful ones. I don't know if you can tell on camera. It's more like a hot pink in my opinion, but I don't really think you can see that at all. <laughs> but here's the completed eye look. I did have to add a little bit more uh, darkness right here because I didn't... I'm telling you guys, this, this sickness, whatever it is, is killing my eyesight. I cannot see like anything and I didn't even notice that this entire side of my eye did not have darkness where this one does. I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, we have plenty of Insta tutorials up on our Instagram with some of this stuff um, so you don't have to worry. It's not just goofy goo today. All right we've got other days that I recorded that I was not sick um, but this is the completed look. I love this palette. I think the inner corner is so fun. I think Everything about this is so fun. Um, I would have done more lower lash line work and maybe like a dark waterline or something, but again, my eyes are really sensitive right now, and so I just, I can't do that. But that's all for my little tutorial, so we will get on with the video. Thanks. All right, and that is it for the video. Uh, let us know your thoughts, your opinions, your feelings, your love for Kleidos. No rude comments necessary. Not that we get them very often, but every so often. Every so, and it's always me too. Is it? Yeah, dude. Oh, don't think so, but whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, let us know your thoughts. Let us know how you like our hair. Um, I don't think this is the best judge of my hair at the moment because I haven't brushed it or styled it today. Um, I slept with it wet or damp and uh, my makeup looks silly in the viewfinder anyway. I'm very confused and you know she's getting sick I'm getting so. very sick and so my eyesight is deteriorating slowly before my <laughs> before my eyes she might be dying yeah so um if I do die we I will just... be changing the channel name to Victoria <laughs> just so if you know. I die and you continue this channel I will come haunt you can I not no you're supposed to be so heartbroken that you can never touch makeup again well we bought a lot of it. I was hoping I'd get over it. Well, not get over it. <laughs> did you not get over did it? You? <laughs> That's not what I meant. Or I, I want to like, like if you die, I want to have my mourning period. Obviously, I'm going to be freaking suicidal for a while. And then eventually. How long is a while? I don't know yet. I'm, By the time all this makeup expires. Yes. At some point, I will have to start moving on with my life. And a good way to heal would be to surround myself with things that make me happy, which are sparkly eyeshadows. Which are Rachel, who is dead, who also loves sparkly eyeshadows. You're gonna cry every time you put eyeshadow on. Probably. <laughs> I have thought, okay, random. I have, you know when you go to sleep and you just, when you're about to go to sleep or if you're like in the car or whatever and you're just like thinking of All right, things. let's think of the worst possible thing that could ever happen to me. It's either my daughter dying or Rachel dying. Yeah. And Rachel dying normally, I can't fathom my daughter dying. I can't think of it for any amount of time, so I kick that out full stop. But Rachel, me, I will, <laughs> I'll be like, like, I was like, how will I tell our audience? Like, do I, do I have to get on here after being like silent for a year and being like, hey guys. 
something happens. Dot dot dot. dot. <laughs> Yeah, like how are we gonna title it? Like, am I gonna make it quick, quick, baby? How are we gonna put it on Twitter? Like, hey, yo, Rachel died, so I'm gonna be gone for a while. Like, well, we ran out of storage midway through our laughter and my tears for the hatred that my twin sister has for me. <sighs> Depressing way to Grow end up. <laughs> Kaleidos, if you see this, I'm so sorry, sweetie. <laughs> Yeah, we're obnoxious. There was a there was a video on Twitter today. It was two twins like, <laughs> like we ate the same for our entire life to lead up to this, and they both sit on the side of a teeter totter, and it was straight. It didn't move, so they were the same weight. It was so funny, and I quoted it, and I was like, "We are this obnoxious in real life." Just so you know, if I don't think teeter totter is the correct a seesaw. <laughs> is that what it's called? Is it not a teeter totter? The thing that you sit on both ends of, and it goes like that. Yeah, maybe it's a seesaw. I think it's a seesaw. What am I? Bananas and pajamas, dude. Yeah, we grew up on that, and Charlotte listens to it. It's a whole thing. But uh, I think we should sign out of the video. I'm so sorry for the mess that we've created. Uh, you guys should see our beauty room right now. Somehow, some way, it looks like a tornado hit it. And we're about to go on vacation, so we're trying to film a little bit so we can kind of get, get videos up while we're gone. Um, and by vacation, I don't really mean like, I know there's COVID, so like, don't eat me when I say that. So we're going to see family. We're going to see family, and we're all safe. I mean, I know I'm sick, but I don't have COVID. It's okay, I promise. We're good. <laughs> um, but hope you guys are all great. So by the time this video goes up, congratulations to whoever wins. <laughs> I Joe hope Biden and Pinky. I hope you have a good four years. <laughs> I can't wait to see what Twitter says about Joe Biden once they stop, you know, sucking his pee pee. <laughs> we gotta turn off the yeah. Anyway, good night all. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, la yeah, bye. Bye. <laughs>